welcome to St Peter's All Age uh, online service. So thrilled uh, you can join us. Uh, today we're going to hear Jesus saying to us all, come uh, uh, follow me uh, on our series of encounters with Jesus. And in the story, before you know it, Jesus is at a party. It seems Jesus loved parties and people loved inviting Jesus to parties. And at this time we can do with parties. But what happens when Jesus comes? Well, we'll find out that later. So as we meet, may you find that as we think about Jesus, your spirits are lifted, you hear his call and you're able to join on the path of his will and plan uh, for your life. So let's begin with a prayer and it's an action prayer if you'd like to join me. Heavenly Father, in our worship today, help us to sing your praise, hear your word, bring our prayers to you, and find strength to serve you wherever we are, day by day. Amen. And a sorry prayer to get us well connected with God. God, you know us, and you know we can be kind and loving. You know that sometimes we get things wrong. We're sorry for the times we hurt other people. Forget to listen to you and don't bother to care for your wonderful world. So may God forgive us. May Jesus bless us. And may God's Spirit help us to grow in love. It's time to sing God's praises.
a reading from Matthew chapter 9, verses 9 to 13. The call of Matthew. As Jesus was walking along, he saw a man called Matthew sitting at the tax booth. And he said to him, follow me. And he got up and followed him. And as Jesus sat at dinner in the house, many tax collectors and sinners came and were sitting with him and his disciples. When the Pharisees saw this, they said to his disciples, Why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? But when Jesus heard this, he said, Those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. Go and learn what this means. I desire mercy, not sacrifice, for I have come to call not the righteous, but sinners. Before I speak, please join me in a prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your precious word, the Bible. May we hear you speaking to us today through your word, and then help us to do what you say. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Well, as we continue with our Lent series, looking at some of the encounters of Jesus, we heard in our Bible reading today about one man and two groups of people whom Jesus met on one particular day. Let's first of all consider the man whom Jesus met. And I need you to imagine the scene. You are in first century Judea. It's a warm, dusty day. You're in the marketplace. Here's the greenery growing around you. OK, it's Judea. Mm. But Judea is occupied by the hated Roman Empire. And some of your fellow Jews, huh, they work for the Romans. They collect taxes for the Romans. Mm. So you hate these people who work for the Romans. They are traitors. Well, on this particular day, the new rabbi, Jesus, appears in town and he's walking through the marketplace. And there's the tax collectors gathering in the taxes for the Romans. And this teacher, Jesus, approaches one of these traitors, one of these tax collectors, a man called Matthew, who's there doing his work. And Jesus comes up to Matthew and says to him, follow me. Everyone looks on in astonishment. This man's a traitor. But Jesus sees in Matthew the man that Matthew could be. Well, everyone waits to see what will happen. After all, Matthew is well paid. He's got status because he works for the Romans. But Matthew gets up. And follows Jesus. Just like that. He leaves behind his wealthy, quite decent life to follow this wandering teacher, to begin a new life with Jesus. Well, 
Well, let's turn to the two groups of people whom Jesus also met that day. It seems that Matthew invites Jesus to his house for something to eat. So Jesus is sitting down, eating. But uh, who is he eating with? <laughs> He's eating with a load more of those tax collectors and a bunch of people who are just called sinners. In other words, bad people. Now, in Jewish culture at that time, and in fact, in many cultures still today, you only eat with friends, with people you trust. A decent person does not sit down and eat with bad people. Well, Jesus is sitting there eating with these traitors and these bad people. And another group of people, some Pharisees, walk by. Now, Pharisees were a bit like the vicars of their day. And they walk by Matthew's house and they see this sight. And they say to Jesus' disciples, what is your teacher doing eating with those people? And Jesus hears the Pharisees and he comes out and he says to them, those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. What he means is, I go to those who want to listen to me. They are people who recognise that they have failings and that they say and that they do things that are wrong like people who realise they are sick and go to see a doctor. People who think they are perfect don't want to listen to me. Just like people who think they are perfectly well don't go and visit their doctor. And Jesus also quotes some words of God from the Old Testament prophet Hosea. I desire mercy not sacrifice. In other words, he's saying to the Pharisees, God wants us to show love, to show mercy, to offer forgiveness, a second chance to people who have done wrong. And that's what I'm doing. And the Pharisees would know that Jesus was speaking about them. He was saying to them that these traitors and sinners recognised that they needed to change their lives and so welcomed Jesus, the teacher, who sat with them, who ate with them, who listened to them and who taught them about God's love and forgiveness. But he was also saying to the Pharisees, you teachers, you who are supposed to be teaching these people, you think you do no wrong and you look down upon these people. You make no effort to tell them about God's love and forgiveness. And as we listen to the events of, those, of that day, we need to ask ourselves, Am I like Matthew and his fellow tax collectors and sinners, knowing that I am not perfect? Knowing that I need to listen, to read God's word, that I need to change some things in my life. And so happy to hear of God's forgiveness and of his love for me. Or am I like the Pharisees? Do I think that I am actually pretty perfect? 
And do I look down on those people whose lives are so obviously bad? And am I failing to tell people about the wonderful God of love? Well, Jesus can only offer to each one of us the transforming power seen in the life of Matthew. If firstly, we are willing to recognise, like Matthew, like the tax collectors, like the sinners, that we're not perfect. And then in recognising this, we listen to Jesus and his word. And like Matthew, trust and obey Jesus. Listen again to the first verse we heard from our Bible reading. As Jesus was walking along, he saw a man called Matthew sitting at the tax booth. And he said to him, follow me. And he got up and followed him. Jesus looked at this man whom others hated and despised. And Jesus offered him mercy, the love of God, a new life with him. And Matthew trusted Jesus. In fact, entrusted his life to Jesus as he left behind his old life. And because of what happened that day, we are reading this day, the book which Matthew wrote, the Gospel of St. Matthew. For our prayers today, we will use the response, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we come into your presence with thankful hearts for all the good things you have given to us. Our heart's desire is to follow where you lead. And as your son Jesus called Matthew to follow him, may we hear you calling us to be your people, to follow your example and to go where you lead. Despite the situation we find ourselves in just now, we thank you for family and friends and the ability to maintain good relationships by telephone, FaceTime and Zoom. Help us to appreciate all that we have and may this experience of the pandemic be a time of growing closer to each other and to you. We pray for those who are having difficulty in coping with the problems of loneliness and isolation. We pray that they may hear your voice speaking words of comfort and encouragement and show us where we need to reach out to those in need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We continue to pray for our government and other world leaders. May they turn to you for wisdom as they make day-to-day -day decisions which affect us all. Give us grace to deal with the difficult rules and regulations. Give us the right spirit to live joyfully and positively despite the restrictions and necessary adjustments in our lives. We pray for those in small businesses whose livelihood is threatened by the present situation. Give them peace in their hearts as they are anxious about being able to sustain their business and their families. Help them to trust in you and not despair. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We continue to pray for the NHS, for the doctors and nurses and all other workers on the front line. Give them knowledge and understanding and compassion as they deal with those in their care. And we pray for all other key workers 
help us to appreciate and thank them for what they do in serving us in so many different ways. Give them courage in the difficulties they face each day and may they recognise your love for them and turn to you for strength and comfort as they do their work. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We now pray for anyone known to us who's ill, lonely or sad. And we pray for the bereaved as they bear the loss of loved ones. In a moment of silence, we remember someone close to our hearts just now. May your deep compassion be their strong comfort. Protect us all from despair and give us grace to know your constant presence and sustaining love. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And we bring our prayers to a close by saying the prayer Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. So once again, thank you for joining us for, for worship and I hope that that's been a real uh, blessing to you, but it's not all over yet. Um, last week, I spoke about what I believe God is calling us to as a church or just two of the things. One is a church for all ages and the other is about growing faith in families and those came from the story of Jesus in the temple. And what I'm going to share next enables us to do that, to be a church of all ages, but also to nurture faith uh, within our families. So here are practical ways in which we can do that. Will you be part of what I believe is God's dream uh, for us? After the all-age section of this service, 
<clears throat> we'll hear from Lorraine and Laura about our young people and their passion for things eco. They met for their first youth eco group during half term and they've come up with some amazing all age ideas for us as a church to get involved with. St Peter's is now registered as a fair trade church and to celebrate our commitment to this we're asking you to design a poster to display in the window of the Simon Peter Centre. The win winners of each category will receive, drum roll, they will receive a fair trade Easter egg. Yes! We can't wait to see what you come up with. Just a few other things uh, to, to bring to you is um, if you happen to go past the church, uh, you'll see the beautiful uh, renewed um, Lichgate roof and the restored gates. But up the footpath, you'll see the hard work uh, resulting in beautiful primulas and shoots coming up at the path to the church. And it says, uh, welcome. Here is a really special place where special things happen. And uh, it's a special part of our community here in Walton. And I want to encourage you to have a look. But I also want to say thank you to our gardening team of Viv and Lindsay and Mark. Thank you. Uh, later today at four o'clock, uh, it's Worship Through Play. Details are on my pastoral letter, which is on the website, as well as uh, the Eco Church things. Um, finally, uh, there's a clip uh, on how one way to read the Bible using a, a phone app. We saw it last week. It'll be on this week. And do give us feedback if you're trying it out, because It'd be great to know uh, whether what we're putting out there is helpful or not. So that would be great to have feedback. Finally, words of uh, commitment and then a blessing. Words of commitment. Because God cares for us, we will care for each other. Because we're part of God's creation, we will care for the earth. Because we're loved by God, we will share God's love with everyone. And now a blessing, a travel blessing, as we travel through the week. May God, who is present with us in sunrise and nightfall, and in the crossing of the sea, guide your feet as you go. May God, who is with you when you sit and when you stand, encompass you with love and lead you by the hand. May God, who knows your path and the places where you rest, be with you in your waiting, be your good news for sharing and lead you in the way everlasting and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you all this day and forevermore. Amen. YouVersion is a Bible app available on the App Store or Google Play. The app offers access to different Bible versions, a verse for the day, audio Bibles, prayer journaling and Bible plans. The plans offer short daily readings on specific topics or sections of the Bible for you to read on your own or together with friends who have the app. Such an easy way to connect with God and others each day. I love it. 
Within the app, there is also a short, simple daily devotion and prayer suitable for an older primary school child for you to read together. And for the younger child, there is a version Bible app just for them with great animations and interactive learning. I would highly recommend this app and it's free. So why not give it a try? Good morning everyone. For those of you who don't know me, my name's Lorraine and I am the youth worker here at St Peter's Church. Our Lent series is Encounters with Jesus, how our relationship with Jesus changes who we are and how we live out our lives in this world. In the Bible reading for today, Jesus called Matthew into a life of mission. John Stark, a Christian theologian, suggests mission as being a partnership of evangelism and social action. And so Jesus called Matthew to join him in sharing the good news of Jesus through words and actions. And we too are invited to join Jesus on this mission, where our every moment, every person, every conversation, every action is an opportunity for the living Christ to breathe through us, reach out through us and touch the lives of others. As you'll hopefully know, we've been journeying as an eco church for a while now, and we achieved our bronze award before Christmas. I have to confess that before I got involved with the eco team, my understanding and participation in all things eco was fairly low level. Yes, I recycle well. Let's face it, the blue bin makes this pretty easy. I bought fair trade when I remembered, and I did often think I really need to think about switching to local providers of fruit and veg when I noticed that most of mine came from overseas that I purchased with my weekly shop, but I didn't actually make the change. I undertook a carbon footprint calculation for our family last year as a result of one of these services, and I have to say I was shocked. Statistically, we were not the worst family ever, but it was clear we were a big contributor and I needed to reflect on how we improved as a family. Switching energy providers to a green energy supplier is one of the most simplest ways to make an instant impact and literally takes minutes. On reflection, I think my failure to act well was that firstly, I had not properly considered how my faith impacted this crucial area. And secondly, I had failed to educate myself. And as I was not personally impacted by my failures, I was not being educated via an experience. Over the last few weeks in Pathfinders and Cypher, we have been thinking about how God's story, his word and stories shared of Jesus' ministry moves us to act in response to caring for our environment. As we met for the first time as an eco youth group during the half term holidays, the scripture that spoke to the group the most is from 1 John chapter 4, verse 19, which says this, we love because God first loved us. We use the word love in so many ways, don't we? Love you as we say goodbye to a friend or family member. Lots of love as we write a greeting in a card. I love Sue Whitaker's lemon drizzle cake. I really do and I really miss it. 
or love in a romantic sense. I love our local parks here in Walton and I felt really lucky to have had so many beautiful choices to walk to on my doorstep during this pandemic. I love my children, but I also love pizza. But I'm pretty sure my children might feel a little unloved with that comparison. The English language doesn't help us to distinguish the different types of love so well. But the Greek language that was used in Bible translations did distinguish the different types of love and they described Jesus' love as agape. Agape was not defined in scripture. They looked to Jesus' teaching, his life, and the stories uh, that he shared to help them define this concept of love. Agape love is not concerned with ourselves, but is concerned with the greatest good of others. Agape isn't born just out of emotions, feelings, familiarity, or attraction, but is a choice. Agape requires faithfulness, commitment and sacrifice without expecting anything in return. This is the type of love the Bible speaks about the most. Agape love in the Bible is love that comes from God. It's not sentimental, it's part of his character. God loves from an outpouring of who he is. 1 John chapter 4 verse 8 says, God is love. God is agapo. He is the source of agape love. His love is undeserved, gracious, sacrificial, powerful, generous. But 1 John 4 verse 19 doesn't just talk about God's love. It says we love because God first loved us. God's desire is for the love we show others to reflect the love God showed for us. That we will reflect his character and so we'll also love sacrificially, generously and powerfully. This is a choice, a deliberate decision that we want to strive for another's good and it is demonstrated through our actions. So our young people and other members of our church family who are passionate about protecting and caring for God's world as we journey as an eco church are inviting you to join them in sharing God's agape love as we explore how we can personally and collectively be the change we want to see in this world. Research undertaken by Christian Charities Tear Fund and Youthscape with young people in a recent report called Burning Down the House suggests that nine out of 10 young people, Christian teenagers, are concerned about climate change, but only one out of 10 think their churches are doing enough. Young people across the UK said their faith motivated them to press for change, that God's story moves them to act. I think this is a really helpful place to start for us all. We need to get to grips with what the Bible says about the planet and about God's and our relationship with it. God cares about all that he has made. I love this quote from Dave Buckless who wrote the book Planet Wise who in the chapter, Why Bother, says this. We need a change of worldview. We are not the only focus of God's creative and saving love. Rather, God cares about all that he has made. We urgently need to recognize that the earth and the creatures with which we share it are not merely the stage on which we act out our relationship with God. They are characters in the story themselves powerful stuff. The Burning Down the House report summarised three messages for us as a church, as a community of believers to reflect on as we think about how we learn together, grow together and nurture the faith of our children and young people as we encourage them to be the church of today and tomorrow. So number one, we need change. Young people believe we all need to acknowledge the problem and that we cannot ignore climate change and its devastating impacts on the natural world and on communities across the globe. Number two, climate activism is fundamental to our faith. The young people in our eco group at St. Peter's wholeheartedly agree with this. We are called to reflect God in caring for creation. In Genesis, God sends Adam into the Garden of Eden to work it and to take care of it. We are to be the gardeners and the caretakers. And number three, 
that the church should be leading the way. Life is full of important issues and we can't get involved in them all. You might be thinking, I'm glad somebody's caring for the planet just as long as it doesn't have to be me. There are many areas of life that only a few people are called to be involved in, but there are also areas right at the heart of Christian faith, which anybody who is a follower of Jesus must take on board. And I believe this is one of them. So where do we start? Acknowledge the issue. If you haven't already, take your first steps today. Listen to God, listen to the church, listen to young people as they share their voice and passions. When we are back in church, talk to the young people, follow their lead, lead them. Learn, educate yourself, dig into the Bible, invest in a book, or well, there are some great podcasts to listen to on this issue, which you might want to listen to while you're taking a walk. Our young people are setting up an Instagram and Facebook eco page where they will share about what we do and what others are doing. Follow them, encourage them, be inspired. Pray, pray for the world, pray for us as a church, pray that God places on your heart the changes he would like you to make and pray for our young people as they step out in faith and act. We are a Bronze Award Eco Church, but the church is not the building. It is us as a community of believers, and we all need to be on the journey. God set the standard for agape, sacrificial, generous and powerful love in sending Jesus to die for us. We do not stop being followers of Jesus when we are in the supermarket making our food choices or watching the news at home and seeing other countries devastated by natural disasters or poverty, or when we throw plastic or uneaten food in our bins, or we throw our can, cup or bottle in the bin in the street that we know will not get recycled. Following Jesus is a whole life thing where we are required to constantly ask ourselves, what would Jesus do? A few years ago, I was introduced to the song, Do Something by Matthew West, by a young person in our youth group as we prepared for the Thrive Youth-led service. There is a running theme here for me for how our young people inspire me to change. The title probably gives away the message of the song, but there was a section that particularly stood out to me which goes like this. I woke up this morning and I saw a world full of trouble and thought, how we ever get so far down? And how's it ever gonna turn around? So I turned my eyes to heaven and I thought, God, why don't you do something? Well, I just couldn't bear the thought of people living in poverty, children sold into slavery. The thought disgusted me. So I shook my fist at heaven and said, God, why don't you do something? And he said, I did. I created you. Challenging words for sure. And I love that just as the young person who shared this song with me was challenging me then to do something, our young people are challenging us now to lead the way and show the love, to share our green hearts. So what changes could you make in this Lent season as we journey to the cross? What could you stop doing? What could you take on? How can you do something to reflect God's agape love? Well, keep watching as Laura is going to share the ideas our youth group have come up with so far to inspire you. Yes, Lorraine, thank you for that. So there are three projects that um, your young people have decided they would like to work on over the next few months. The first is Eco Bricks. This is where we get um, a, a plastic bottle, preferably a one and a half, two litre size bottle, and you fill it with all your non-recyclable um, plastic that you use in the house. So um, any film um, on top of uh, you know, your hand packets or um, your ready meals, um, any plastic from like uh, wrapping of um, you know bags of apples, things like that. So any sort of plastic that can't be recycled um, to give a bit of a rinse and then you shove it into the plastic bottle. Um, now it takes a bit of time be to fill up one um, because it needs to be completely solid. Um, so it's a lot of plastic, but honestly, you'd be surprised at how quickly a family can get through um, that much plastic to fill up the bottle. 
Now then the these bottles are go on to be used as bricks um in projects so um it may be that um, once we've got a few bricks in we will be using them in the church graveyard to build um a little bench for people to sit on um or we might give them to another project in the area that is already using eco bricks um and we can just contribute ours towards their project so we'll have a look and decide um, in the future. So that's one thing that your um, young people would love to get you involved in um, and they would love um, for you guys to be praying for them, collecting plastic bottles, filling up one yourself um, and in any way that you think you can help with that project. The second project your young people have chosen to get involved in is the crisp packets blankets. Now you might be thinking, whoa, that sounds weird, but <laughs> bear with me. What it is that somebody has figured out that the crisp packet uh, material um, can be, um, I think it's ironed um, and uh, with lots of other, of other crisp packets, obviously, um, and they create a blanket um, similar to the type you would get if you, you know, suffered hyperthermia or, you know, a first aid sort of um, mountain rescue blanket, you know, the silver ones. Um, Similar to that, um, they're made to keep um, homeless people warm in the winter. Um, so we discussed it in the group. We thought a lot of us are crisp eaters. <laughs> so let's put those crisp packets to good use. So um, again, if you could um, just collect up your crisp packets, just give them a little uh, little rinse out um, when you're finished with them so that they don't stink. <laughs> And then pop them in a bag um, and keep them together. Um, and there will be a time shortly when we're asked um, for you to bring in your crisp packets in a safe way. We'll figure out how that's done. But again, that's another project that we would love you to help our young people out with. We tried discussing lots of other um, ideas and we kind of came up with a three-way tie for the third project. Um, and it was raising vegan awareness, um, fair trade awareness, and awareness of the three R's, reduce, reuse, recycle. Um, so we're not obviously asking everybody to become full on vegans, but really just uh, the idea of um, swapping one meal a week, maybe um, even one meal a month for a vegan meal. Um, and that way, reducing the amount of meat that is produced um, and needed in our country. Um, we all know that producing meat is um, is a large contributor to the greenhouse gases in our country um so we would love to be able to reduce those so um the guys are working towards um giving us some vegan recipes some ways we can easily swap out meat um and then on to fair trade awareness um obviously we we did some of that with the fair trade pancakes um and on pancake day um but the group are going to be working towards um, building that into your everyday life so that um, if you can you're going to choose fair trade as much as possible so finally just what i'd like to say to close off our section here today is that we would love initially for you just to pray for our guys pray that um this team keeps that fire of passion burning for this um for this project um, that the eco youth team would grow um, that they would be comfortable enough to invite their friends to it and that they get comfortable enough to share with you guys the main the big people church <laughs> about what uh, what they're doing and um, how you guys can help them um, next, if you can have a think, you know, is there any little projects that you could take up over Easter? Um, it's really simple way, again, as Lorraine said, would just be to like, a follow and share the Facebook and Instagram pages. Um, and we'll pop links to them on the church website. So if you keep an eye on the church website, there'll be lots more information coming up soon. Um, but we would really appreciate your prayers. Take care and God bless.